All right, making a video. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Uh, made 40 minutes of this video, and the computer froze. And I made like two hours of video, and it was too big a video. I wiped out. Uh, I guess there wasn't enough resources, so it didn't save the file correctly, so I lost it all. So it's all kind of depressing. So I'm not very enthusiastic. Um, so anyway, mostly a conversation about what science is and um, what's, you know, what are reasonable arguments in this context about who's being reasonable and who's being unreasonable. Um, what's a valid argument, what's an invalid argument, and that kind of stuff. And mostly related to a Piro video, where again he's saying that I'm anti-science. Uh, that's the accusation. Um, when that's not the accusation, I'm all for science when it's done scientifically. I'm all for experiments and finding the truth and all that stuff. What I'm against is dogma um, disguised as science, and that's what a lot of modern science is. It's just, you know, we've decided on something, and you know, I've made the point. You take a little tiny bit of evidence, it seems like, and therefore they write on the stone, it is like. And they've declared a truth and a premise and an axiom, and you must believe. And if you don't believe, you're rejecting science or denying science or doing some other kind of horrible thing by saying you don't have enough evidence. Your evidence sucks. It's a piece of cardboard on the table. You don't have a real gun. Tying. You don't have fingerprints tying that guy to anything. You have virtual fingerprints and a picture of a gun. You don't have any evidence to justify conviction. That's the simple argument. Instead of countering that argument by providing me a flood of great evidence, um, they just keep making accusations that I'm anti-science or that somehow I'm cheating the evidence or I've committed some fraud, but they'll never quote the fraud. Um, it's just disgusting. Um, humans are disgusting creatures. They can't do anything fair and honorably. And that's all you learn from this process. Is just verifies what I already knew. People suck. And they suck dramatically. <laughs> you know, it's a dramatic amount of suck. All right, anyway. So William says, <coughs> William, uh, that explains why my washing machine keeps inching away. Thank you very much. Well, it's not exactly the same thing, but obviously this idea of uh, how you build the simplest engine uh, would be an interesting bit of physics to talk about. And um, that's sort of what I'm describing is this simplest engine. Uh, the advantage of his theory is that it solves the problem of induction. So we said that before, but um, this is the spooky action question. I mean, induction is a really good illustration of action at a distance. Uh, but so is gravity, and so is magnetism. They're all good uh, examples. So I mean, magnetism is induction in some ways. But, um, so, um, you know, the... The elephant in the room is action at a distance. And what physicists are stuck doing, it's not an easy thing where we can see the arrows shooting or we can see something. We can't see the stuff. It's very small, very discreet, tiny. Um, trillions of interactions happening between my fingers. Um, the fundamental argument is those, 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 those trillions of interactions are all physical interactions. There's real stuff going from one place to the other, communicating. Um, action. So action happens in one place, action travels to another place and causes action is the theory. Um, in my opinion, the rational theory. And the irrational dogmatic theory is, no, it's spooky action. It's entanglement. It's some other kind of mush. It's some special force. It's some special event. Uh, and um, there's no evidence for it. So I'm just saying, again, so again, part of this process is talking about what are the lawyers actually doing? So if I was comparison, to, we're advocates. We're advocating for a position, for a point of view, for something we see that you're not seeing kind of thing, however you want to look at it. But we're advocates. And um, we advocate for processes. We advocate for routines. We a advocate for habits um, in terms of how we even interact and attempt to communicate with each other. Certain rules have to be obeyed. You, you just don't make a litany of accusations it's easier to tear something down than it is to build something up, and that has to be acknowledged. It's easy to put somebody, force somebody to answer questions that are completely irrelevant, um, put them on the defensive. These are tactics and arguments that don't mean anything. Um, 
what means something is the evidence, okay, for the convictions. Your so in, in my simple argument is, and I think one well founded in the evidence and in facts, um, is that their evidence is mush, that it's all cardboard pictures of pieces of evidence. It's all created to invoke some impression of reality. Again, they don't have a gun, they don't have fingerprints, it's all virtual and fake and phony and dark and mysterious. Um, it's all an idea, uh, not a fact. Um, and they're sitting here in trial, tr dishonestly describing it as, well, no, we've proven it, we've demonstrated it, so it's, we're all convinced. It's a settled question, he's guilty. <laughs> we don't really need evidence, is all they're really doing. And I'm pointing that out, I'm just standing up and saying, to the jury, to you, um, what's the truth here? I mean, is any of this stuff they got on this table real hard evidence? I mean, is it okay for them just draw a picture of a gun on a piece of paper and then say, well, you can imagine the defendant holding that and shooting somebody, can't you, right? So if you can imagine it, it must be true. It must be what really happened, right? If you can imagine it, it must be possible. And if it's possible, it must be the, what really happened. So he's guilty, right? And I'm just stepping in to say, that's not logical reasoning. You haven't proven that this gun did it. You haven't proven that everything's a wave. You haven't proven any of this stuff. Why are you asserting it when you haven't demonstrated it to be a fact at all? So anyway, and it, you know, I've used this analogy before, but they're basically coming into court with an, the invisible man theory. I mean, this is what they always resort to. I mean, it always becomes an invisible man theory. And they're just telling you, you can't convict anybody because the Invisible Man did it, right? You can imagine the Invisible Man. You can imagine him sneaking around stealing DNA. You can imagine all that stuff. So it must be the truth that that's what happened. Because we can imagine it. If it's theoretically possible, that is, we can theoretically think of it, well, it must have some grounding then. It must be a reasonable uh, deduction. So, of course, the Invisible Man did it. You can't prove otherwise. Anyway, finally, so this is on a Theora video, so this is a response to Ken Wheeler. So he's implying that he's talking about Ken Wheeler, but it seems obvious it's a troll comment. I've been posting this on this dude, so again, uh, you know, anybody who uses that rhetoric, I mean, is there anything for me to say but, what, are you 12 years old, so you're 12 year old? I mean, who does that? What reasonably grown up human being you know, calls authorities, I mean, people of age, dudes. It's just baby talk. Uh, Page for some time now to just shut up. So he's been posting on Ken Wheeler's videos that Ken should shut up. Well, I'm saying, no, that's not true. So the guy's starting off with first dudes and then shut up. Like he posted that on Ken's video. Didn't happen. Uh, show me the evidence. Uh, frankly, Ken doesn't tolerate any conversation about his lack of integrity on his boards. <laughs> okay, he doesn't. Because that would provoke a conversation about how irrational his physics is, and he's not going to allow that. Um, so he says, he's told him to write a paper. Well, he has written paper, in the sense he's written a book, and it's, you know, it's nonsense. It doesn't, it's irrational and crazy, but it's a book. Uh, have it peer reviewed, like that means something. So again, this notion that the peer review, what what is peer review? Send it to Piero? I, I mean, who do you think's peer reviewing? There's not some slot somewhere where you go, you know, you stick your paper into you know, Einstein's grave and Einstein looks it over and he explains to you why it doesn't make sense to him. That doesn't happen. There's no peer review. There's some grad student or something, okay, who looks over something and casually reads it and, um, has an opinion uh, and decides whether or not it survives to have a real process. So before there's even a trial, there's some guy who doesn't know shit about the law who decides, fuck it, I don't want to see a trial. This guy's guilty. Fuck him. He doesn't need another new trial. I mean, there's no peer review. There's asshole review. And even if you could get to the review process, the review process doesn't come necessarily with anything rational. It just comes with a rejection notice. So again, it's kind of nonsense. Um, Einstein had his uh, papers on relativity, <laughs> you know, his own theory, um, rejected by peer-reviewed peer journals. I mean, like that could make sense. Um, but anyway, 
um, and collect his Nobel Prize. So again, that's not the process. The process is advocating and convincing. Um, you have to get the jurors to at least say, I want to hear more. You have to get the jurors to at least say there's something interesting here. And until they do that, there's no point in going to the authorities because they're the ones that are so corrupt, right? I mean, the accusation is, is they already have the power. They already have the control. Um, so why, why would they care to publish your paper? It doesn't have anything to do with their interest. So that's not going to happen. So there has to be enough noise to kind of provoke it, force the confrontation, force them to review it, force them to uh, pay attention. So until you get through that process, um, you have no hope. So I'm not saying it's not a worthy thing to do is to write it up and, and offer it. But we've already seen that they're not willing to even pay any attention. So, you know, is it realistic? No. Um, he won't, though. Well, he won't for r rational reasons because he's not going to get a fair trial. So, again, if, if you want to create some fair place that you go to discuss science, well, then go ahead and offer me... Give me the example of that fair place. Show me the place I should submit to. Why don't you tell me who, who's, who, where's the authorities who really know physics and really know what evidence is and know how to judge it? Show me that place. Um, he'd rather pander to YouTube. Well, yes, he does do that, the YouTube audience. But again, it's not YouTube he's pandering to. He's pandering to the audience. And clearly the audience is full of a bunch of religious kooks still and people who want woo and fantasy stories and... They want to dig up the old people and have them run the show for some dopey weird reason. Um, the long dead. They want to go back to some you know world where they all had fucking lice and uh, <clears throat> smelly crotches. Um, it's easier, I guess, for them to understand that kind of world. Uh, but yeah, I don't understand any of it. I think it's idiocracy all over the place. So yes, he's pandering to the idiots and getting his ego massaged. Yes, he's certainly doing that. <clears throat> spends live rooms that he doesn't record where he just wallows in a bunch of personal babble and talks about his silk underwear and whatnot. All quite, uh, <laughs> just really quite horrifying. Watched five minutes of it the other night. Just, poof. No, no value whatsoever. He apparently believes in some sort of reincarnation, but we forget who we used to be. So we really have past lives, but we just forget. Eh, whatever. So anyway, that's it for the comments. Really, pieces of suck all over the place. Um, and anyway, so we'll move on to the Puro video. It should be here. You know, this science talk thing never works. So the microphone's broken, this or that. And even when it works, it's true. Uh, the science is just silly. Just made up shit all over the place. So somewhere around here is where Puro started. And he says a lot of just, it's just nothing. So I should just there's only two statements he makes first he calls me anti-scientist um <clears throat> says i have some sort of credibility issues regarding my philosophy and um then in the end um says that to suggest the idea that the universe um <clears throat> might have uh force interaction rules that are you know i, I mean i've suggested two plus two plus two physics right I've, I've reduced it so far down to almost nothing in terms of so few moving parts and he's making the accusation that it's the same thing as suggesting rope theory or hyperburloid theory our entanglement our virtual photons our bent space but somehow suggesting that there could be See how this chalkboard thing works? Uh, well, it's okay. There's going to be too much glare, but we'll see. You know, that, that interactions can, can have parts to them. Like you could say two things are going to hit each other. That you could say they go right through each other. Well, that's like nothing happened. Or you could say um, they reflect. You know, that one thing reflects off the other, and this thing reflects off that thing, and that's another possibility. Or you could suggest that... <clears throat> in a three-dimensional universe that the two things could hit and because they have an arrow shape or something you know they they're actually like an arrow that the two things slide off of each other and one goes this way and one goes this way or they could go this way and that way of course um, but that that's what happens in the interaction so in the case of the right turn you have a change in the universe right because if they miss there's just an arrow going this way there's an arrow going this way. So I've been over this before. But he, think, he thinks this <coughs> is the same thing as suggesting a rope. 
or suggesting a bent geodesic or suggesting entanglement or suggesting one of these convoluted like a, a wave matrix or a ether or some kind of other thing. They're just talking about the fact that these are simple interactions are probably somewhere in the foundation of physics that is the physics of change would have something to do with this kind of simple mechanism um, he suggests this is extraordinary you know like this is UFO theory or Sasquatch theory when you can't get any simpler in terms of physics <laughs> you know, it's the simplest physics you could talk about um, so anyway just so bad well anyway so I'll play some of it uh, but it's really just horrible stuff. Um, and Gary is an example that bothers me in my mind here. Okay, let me go back a little bit. Now it's that we're pro-crime. You know, the same thing with all the national... So so he's, he's saying that anybody who finds fault with him or his philosophy or his Borg um, is doing so in some unfair manner. Like it's unfair for the right to look at the left and see preposterous stupidity in the fact that they claim they're not for open borders or they're not for Muslims taking over when everything they're doing will create that end result, right? They're not for laziness, but they want uh, a universal income. They're not for, but you know, everything they're suggesting is exactly going to create the, the end, right? So they're saying, let's open the borders and let religious people into the country who don't believe in democracy, who want a king, and, or an Ayatollah, actually, they want a religious king, um, and and they have no common values with anybody living who used to live in America. No, no traditional American value. No Thomas Jefferson notion of rights and wrongs, um, and they have, are completely obnoxious to Jeffersonian notions. They hate our Constitution. They do, in fact, hate our freedom. Um, and he's pretending that that's a slander and that's an unfairness when it's clearly applicable because you are creating that exact world. <laughs> so it's, it's a fair cop. I mean, it's a fair argument. And he's saying that's some sort of um, unfair, um, uh, perverse, and distorted attack when that's exactly what you're advocating. You know, so, I mean, the, the left has gone way too far left, um, and they've just made themselves as unelectable as neocons. I mean, they've just made it impossible for a rational person to vote for either one of these idiots. Defense and soft on defense versus now, no, we want to actually destroy it, you know. Um, soft on terrorism, now we're actually trying to make an Islamic state in the United States, you know, to a conspiracy. Yes, you're trying in the sense that you're doing everything that will cause that to happen. You're giving them every latitude to do exactly that. Establish Islamic town, Islamic state, Islamic country. You're giving them every faculty to make that happen. Every ability, every tool they need to make that, you're handing them. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what you're doing. You're not even, you don't require anybody to speak English. You don't require anybody to do anything constructive to being an asset to the country. You're basically saying, bring me your huddled masses striving to make a mess and you don't want them to be anything else than that ever to ever grow up <laughs> okay they won't grow up and they don't have to grow up you're just saying be kids forever in america and then i notice also this rise in the anti-science stuff all right so there is he's noticed a rise in it right there's no rise in it he has no evidence to show that there's any more dissidents now than there was before the only thing there's a rise in just like there's a rise in ufo theories of certain kinds crop circles so yeah there's this these people playing this flat earth game you know i mean it's so preposterously stupid and so under evidenced and so easily debunked it's like the 9 11 stuff whatever the conspiracy theory so there's a bunch of conspiracy theories Okay, and they usually have some core that goes back to some um, totally irrational religious crap. Um, but regardless, they exist. There really hasn't been a rise in it in any recent days. There's not like there's more of it. Um, it's the same amount. They just have more of a voice on an internet so you can find them where you couldn't find them before. But there's no evidence it wasn't just as many nuts. Um, and Gary is an example of bothers. See, so and he puts me in this category as if because I'm say, claiming you don't have any evidence, 
that your evidence is all cardboard and crap. It's all facade. It has no substance. And I'm making the exact, I'm making the accusation by pointing it right to the evidence. I'm showing you the experiments, showing you that it doesn't prove what they say it proves. I'm showing you the alternative explanations for things like polarization and charge and magnetism that work instead of, and don't rely on virtual anythings and magic dust or any of that crap. Um, I'm explaining all the oppositions to something like a particle gravity. I'm explaining away why they don't mean anything, why gravity is something you fall into something else's. The gravity something else makes is the gravity that affects you. You don't make the gravity you fall into. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but I've made all these arguments. There's no counter argument to anything I've said. So he's not going to quote anything I say and show me how it's a flat earth statement. He's not going to show me how it's uh, way overstated. He's not going to show any of that. He's just going to make this vague accusation that somehow I'm a conspiracy theorist or I'm an anti-science. When I love science, I love finding the truth. I love experiments. Couldn't couldn't have a deeper passion for all of that. And what have I demonstrated? Oh, oh I'm just pointing out how, no, I'm not going to believe everything you say. Just because you say it, I'm supposed to believe it? You, you, you're putting this stupid, silly cardboard drawing of a gun on the table and saying you have evidence that he shot this other guy with that gun? No, I'm saying it's, it's no. You don't have any evidence. Me in my mind here yeah. because it just it reflects back on some of his other ideas. So again, this whole that somehow because I believe one thing and uh, that means I'm wrong about everything. You know, if you're wrong about one thing, you're wrong about everything. If you're right about one thing, you're right about everything. Well, that's all horseshit anyway. Um, but how how are they connected at all? And what would the connection be besides, again, the same thing? What else am I doing but making fucking arguments? If I'm talking about something philosophical or, or political, I bring up my evidence. I point out my line of reasoning. Well, there's evolution, and evolution is not a great thing. And when you think about it, it even gets worse and worse because it's an insidious plan. If I had a plan to improve something by making a thousand kittens and killing 999 of them in some horrible way so I could perfect some some great plan in the end. So in the end I get one great cat, but I killed thousands and thousands of them in a horrible way to get the one great cat. Uh, you wouldn't let me do it. You would say that the environmental impact statement wouldn't survive. I can create a bunch of DuPaul accidents to you know perfect my oil tanks or something. Of course not. Oh, I can crash a bunch of Valdezes, millions of them, to make a better tanker? You'd say, no, you can't do that. That's crazy. You can't create all that collateral damage to have your little fun. Uh, so I'm making rational, reasoned arguments. You're not countering any of those. Never, never, never does the Piro ever respond to anything I ever assert, right? So every point I've made about the two-slit experiment, single-slit, uh, why does the photon split in two? triple slits or multi slits why are there images how can waves make images in those locations completely inconsistent with the theory um, you know, I, I'd say show me the photon show me the des description of how an interferometer works show me how one single photon if it went into an interferometer what would the single photon do um, he doesn't answer any of the challenges he just keeps asserting he's proven everything so well established and proven he, he doesn't need to defend it so I point out how it's a piece of cardboard. It's a drawing of a gun. I show it to the you jurors. I'm showing you the piece of cardboard. I show you Professor Lewin. I show you somebody else asserting something for which they have no business asserting. Like Professor Lewin saying there's two voltages in one place. Something silly. I show you the cardboard. I show you how it's a picture on a cardboard. It's a silly conclusion based on a misunderstanding of the evidence, not an understanding of it. And you'll, you're going to give me an argument that somehow I've cheated? Because I showed you? Look, it's a piece of cardboard. It's a drawing of a gun. It's not a gun. Their nail in the coffin evidence is crap. It's not anything close to evidence. And it's certainly not close to what you need to convict something. Like they haven't proven wave theory in any way, shape, or form. They haven't proven that photons are bent by gravity in any way, shape, or form. These are just paper assertions. And this whole argument of this channel has been that from the very beginning that they have no evidence supporting their uh, dogmatic declarations of the truth, that there is a bent geodesic. They haven't proven it exists in any way. 
they haven't proven any relationship between that geodesic and the function of time, that somehow time changes. Not that clocks change, time changes. They haven't demonstrated any of this nonsense. Like the uh, decent, um, not even based on whether I agree with him or not, but like I oh, agree with him. Not, not based on whether I agree with him or not. I mean, again, it's just reasoning. So, so he's bringing up IRV or instant runoff voting. And we had this discussion years ago, and I pointed out how to him how it's completely useless unless you get rid of the geographic voting districts. Okay, as long as we have a geographically bound um, voting right, we don't have any voting right. Okay, because your ideology will never be represented, ever. Okay, <laughs> just your geography gets represented, not your ideology. And the same majority gets to win every single election, because you don't change the proportion of cigarette smokers to non-smokers by changing how small a pool you vote in because there's no segregation. So unless you're geographically segregated, our democracy doesn't work. It only works as if the Quakers are all in one place and the non-Quakers are in another place. And all. That's the only way that a geographic system can work is if all, all the ideologies are segregated. <laughs> well, they're not. So geographic segregation just means you have the same election in 496 million different places, but you just keep electing the same people because the same majority gets to control every single district. So what's the point? It's it's useless as a as a tool of democracy. All right, uh, we should be voting our ideology. There should be ideological congressional districts, not geographic congressional districts. There should be as the the people in Congress should be representing what we believe, not where we live. I mean, it's too simple an argument, and he's finally, maybe, see, he might not even understand the concept, so he probably doesn't even agree that that's important yet. But, I mean, instant run of voting is useless without it. That's the point I made seven years ago, and he keeps saying, well, the instant run of voting is a great idea, and I keep saying, well, I didn't convince you of it because it's only a great idea if you get rid of geographic voting districts. RV, I do agree with, you know, that we need a non-geographical type of representative. There, he's saying it, finally. He's finally saying it, okay? But that's something I asserted seven or eight years ago. Um, and at the time, he wouldn't agree to it. He wouldn't agree that ge the agreed geographic thing was the problem. I said the geographic thing is the biggest problem. The biggest problem with our democracy is that we're voting with our geography, not our ideology. Biggest problem. That's why it's all pork. That's why it's all special interest. That's why that's what ruins the whole fucking process. You can't have a democracy if you're voting with your fucking where is my house? Where your house is is not an important issue. Who you're living next to is. I do agree. We have the details we differ on. Anti-natalism, I disagree, except I disagree, but he won't make any rational arguments explaining why he disagrees. So he won't counter argue a single argument you make. You you just argue it's a it's a preposterous arrogance for you to assume what's in something else's interest. It would be a crime in real life for me to take a bunch of straws out of my pocket, okay, and, and some of them, you know, one of them's a skull and crossbones, kid dies. One of them, the kid gets sick. One of them, the something else happens to a kid. And stick them in their pockets. I'd be a criminal if I did that, right? And he thinks it's a, some sort of eternal right. Like, I have the right to make these decisions for people. I have a right to say, I know what's best for you. This is okay for you. This is going to be good for you. This is preposterously arrogant. It's like him saying he has a right to go to Las Vegas with my money and lose it for me. No, you don't have that right. You can only do it if you know you're going to win. And you can't know that. You'd have to be a preposterously arrogant asshole to think you did. And so he still disagrees with the principle of you don't have a right to pretend you're competent when you're not, that it's an experiment you can control, that you can create any kind of disaster and it's okay because you didn't mean to. Um, it's just horseshit. You're playing with other people's welfare, and you're doing it without any professionalism, without any competence. And he's still advocating for it, even though he's proof of the failure. He personally failed in a catastrophic way, and yet he's still advocating and still defending the experiment. He made Frankenstein. Uh, the, the whole horror happened. And, and he's pretending, well, let's do it again. It was a great success. I mean, it's so obscenely glib.
or like Cam you said, are incapable of learning. So this is all so unrelated. So you see, he does this. He just mixes of 10 million subjects, superficially barely touches them in any kind of meaningful way, and then pretends he's a philosopher. And he hasn't even come close to getting to the substance, the roots of the thing. Anything that really matters. He's such a show lawyer. It's all just a show. It's all just bullshit. All right? And it's even this whole understanding of what advocacy is. What are we supposed to be advocating for? You're not supposed to be advocating for a criminal. The, uh, the lawyers exist to make sure the truth is preserved from chicanery. They're there to counter each other's lies and deceptions. They're there to defend the truth. They're there not to force the guy to be guilty or to force the guy to be innocent. They're there to find the truth, to make the truth visible. Are you doing that in your advocacy for the conventional standard model? Are you really defending the truth when you say it's the most proven theory ever? Are you really being an honest advocate when you pretend that your mushy, silly, seems like evidence is way too weak for conclusions and certainly way too weak for you to arrogantly call other people anti-something or evil or stupid or something else because they don't sit there and pretend that a drawing of a gun is a gun. Uh, you know, to com be or not to be, the Hamlet, is that Hamlet? Whoever. Um, you know, to commit suicide. Not even close to getting to the story, right? Uh, and, and again, the, the argument of to be or not to be is not the argument of anti-natalism. It has nothing to do with having to commit suicide. Nothing at all. It has to do with understanding that you don't have a right to impose. That's all. It has, it has to do with understanding that you can't be a rapist. You can't, you can't subject something else to harm and danger and jeopardy uh, because you, you get an orgasm doing it. The fact that you have fun raping doesn't mean rape is good. It's, it's that kind of logic. So he doesn't even understand the subject at all. He just thinks he has a right to impose because he's a godlike character. Suicide or not, the value of life um, to do to, to anti so the, again there's no theory of the value of life that doesn't come out of religion what has value is is sensations harm pain and pleasure has value there's great value in relieving someone's pain um, that's a fact that maybe we can all agree on um, but anything else you're going to say we're probably not going to agree on um, about what has value so that's the kernel of it and they don't want the colonel to be respected. They want some notion of the word life to be respected. The idea of life is not the respectable bit. The fact that living things can be in jeopardy or be facing harm, that's important. That should be mitigated. And the easiest way to mitigate it is don't make it in the first place. Or not. In other words, these life questions is a totally valid important thing to bring up you know that was an important conversation and then going off though and doing the scientific stuff seems overblown no, no. yeah yeah overblown why it's the same argument you're living in a fake universe okay of entanglement bent geodesics virtual photons uh wavicles magical entanglements uh, uh, randomness, spontaneous, things that just don't really happen and they're all just drawings you've drawn. There's no evidence they really exist and I'm arguing to live in the real world. I'm arguing for the rational theory of events, of causes and effects. And the causes and effects get simpler as you go down, not more complicated. There's no brain inside my brain telling my brain how to be a brain. There's no brain inside of that brain telling that brain how to be a brain, how to be a brain. Uh, you know, that's all nonsense. Okay, there's causes and effects. The Rube Goldberg machine doesn't have a Rube Goldberg machine making the Rube Goldberg machine. The elements are simpler than the, the bigger thing. <laughs> the bricks are simpler than the building. Not that he has his own scientific explanation or, or uh, Ken Wheeler, is that the Oriental? I don't know, not that we have it, 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 we've detailed it over and over again and pr pr demonstrated how it's perfectly consistent with uh, the math and the, uh, the, the evidence and the experiments um, that this rational interpretation is a much sensible, complete explanation. It answers the question of what is magnetism, what is polarization, what is charge, 
what is gravity? I've more completely answered the questions and with a much simpler theory. That's the facts. Now why don't you in some way demonstrate how that's not a fact, how the theory doesn't work, doesn't fit the evidence, or doesn't fit the mathematics? Why don't you just show how it doesn't work? Um, and, uh, you know, the dissident scientists and uh, Bill Gates and all of the work. Yeah, I can show how their theories don't work or are premised on a, a mechanism that can't even physically be possible. Atoms can't be connected by a rope to every other atom in the universe because the amount of rope would be bigger than the atoms. The, the atom can't even hold the rope. There'd be so much rope. Ones that, um, and some of those theories, you know, that I actually think they're onto something like Nick Harvey's theory of time, an artist's theory of time and space. So I only want to, you know, you, 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 you even say this and you say, who would, who would say that this is a good idea to combine a word like art and science? Like they should have anything to do with each other. Now, if you want to go back to the real artists of the past, the ones who really were mechanically proficient in their functions, they were kind of scientists, okay? It was just a science. Uh, rendering was a science, okay? If you want to duplicate something in three dimensions of sculpture, you're essentially being a scientist. You're not being an artist. You're not pulling it out of, of your imagination in some kind of um, cute, fun, kid way. You're doing it in a very mechanical way through very practiced routines that you do with your mind <clears throat> to imagine what you want to create and to, to, to gain the physical um, hand-eye coordination to do it. You're playing an instrument. It's a science. When somebody's playing the violin really well, it's essentially a science because they've practiced it, they've perfected it, and it's a mechanical event, a chain of events. Um, it's silly to call it an art. They're not pulling it out of nowhere. They're pulling it out of something very, very, very precisely organized in their understanding and uh, of their skill. It's a skill that has nothing to do with any creativity nonsense. Um, art. <clears throat> so it's just an abhorrent, silly thing to do to talk about art science. And of course, he probably the only reason why he thinks this, whatever his idiotic theory is, has any meaning is because he put the word art in front of it. He turned it into a religion, into woo, into uh, bullshit. Um, the part that I have a difficulty with is like, because I definitely have my own theory, like one of them. Oh, I, I, so it's okay for him to definitely have his own theory and to advocate for it, to argue for it. And if he, I was to say he was anti science because he has his own theory, uh, somehow he might find that offensive. Um, but clearly, I would argue that his theory is anti-science. I mean, he's just rejecting all that we know about reality. So he's going to go into a whole spiel here about how, uh, um, you know, paramecium's get thirsty and hungry and all this kind of stuff. That things that don't have brains have brains because they're living things. Because we put them in a silly category where we've said, we've essentially said bricks are buildings. And now we're going to give the same properties a building has to the bricks. And we're going to give the bricks the same properties that the buildings have when they're really not the same thing, right? So when we say life, we're really describing anything from one cell, okay, is a living thing, to the whole organism that's a collection of cells, a, a community of cells. And we're saying those two things are the same thing. So the brick and the building are the same thing. Obviously, my brain is made out of cells. Neurons are what makes it work. If there's no cells, there's no brain. This brain isn't in the cells. It's made of the cells. These are not the same thing. You can't give them the same properties. A building is not a solid brick. And a solid brick is not a building. And I, I mean, it's just a silly way of describing reality. So he's guilty again. I'm, I'm just pointing out. He's this asshole lawyer talking about shysterism and how lawyers are crooks and how these people shouldn't be dissident. Um, and he's overtly guilty of worse crimes against reason and logic. How can you possibly say that you think all these things are the same thing, that the brick is the same as the building, that a uh, multicellular organism is the same thing, belongs in the same category as a single cell? It's a preposterous statement on its face. So he thinks cells have brains, that somehow the same functions are happening that our brains create. We know our functions happen in our brain, right? Yeah, you've got to know that, right? You've got to know I just fiddle with a couple of cells in your brain and I completely change your personality. I completely change who you are and how you behave. Completely change it. You know, with just a few tears I make in the, in the system. 
not, you know, you, you realistically think there's any possibility that this fantasy fable this asshole is going to tell about how a paramecium has some mechanism that's exactly like our brain, making the same kind of sensations and feelings. What sense can that make? This is preposterous starting ground. And this asshole will call somebody else anti-science? There's no science defending any of this shit. Uh, that I people know about is, you know, I think all life forms have have an internal Cartesian theater. Right? right, so it just doesn't make any sense, right? This complex mechanism that's creating a screen, a projector, chairs, lights, and a, and, and a person sitting in the chair. So your brain is creating the whole thing, the whole illusion of, of consciousness, the whole projection. It's making it out of an arrangement inside your brain of electricity through neurons and that's the fact it is making it and he thinks that complex thing that takes 100 billion cells to do and takes 20 percent of your energy to keep going he thinks that thing is somehow being duplicated exactly in its function inside of a paramecium inside of something with plasma and a few uh, uh, little pieces floating around it's a preposterous assertion it's so extraordinary, it should require some kind of evidence, and there's no evidence. All we see the paramecium's do are the crudest, stupidest things. They're like watching your programmed robot go through its routine. It's just obviously a simple routine. It's clearly only little simple knee jerks. And they've demonstrated and proven that stuff in the sense that they've proven that paramecium's, when they go through their death struggle, that it's all just based on simple right-hand rules. You know, if it hits twice in one direction, then it goes three times in the other direction. I mean, simple things like that. They're, they're really, they've done it statistically, analyzed it, and found how crude it is. It's not hungry. It's not afraid. It's not any of those things. It's a silly theory, preposterously silly, and it's in the face of all the evidence. All the evidence. Right, so a mosquito that's flying along... And Nietzsche said this, used this exact example, which is why I'm using it. A mosquito that's flying along sees the whole world, you know, going by them. So this idiotic notion that uh, Nietzsche somehow knew something about science, um, and even to bring up Nietzsche's name, the idiot um, <coughs> kook who thought we all should be Nazis, I, I mean, it's just so stupid um, for any asshole to assert Nietzsche as anything but an idiot, uh, a nihilist idiot, um, <coughs> who... You know, and this is coming from some jackass who defends the left, which is really funny, where Nietzsche pretty much abolished all um, notion that there's any such thing as a um, positive act um, in the sense that you can't fix any problems. Uh, you have to just leave them broken. Uh, hilarious. He'd call himself a social, social justice warrior when Nietzsche would have said, you're an asshole. So why is he, why is he quoting Nietzsche? I mean, such a fool. They've got a little, uh, a little stream of consciousness with their, you know, an eye. Yes, they have a brain. So again, so, so he's making an assertion that paramecium's have, and then he shows the example of a mosquito. Yes, mosquitoes have brains. Mosquitoes can learn. So it seems obvious that uh, feelings are really good if you want to reward and punish something. They have to be able to feel. If they can't feel, there's no way to reward and punish them, is there? Come on, realistically. So the feeling has to be for that purpose. It's the only utility a feeling has, is to reward and punish. So it can only work on something capable of learning, something that can have a negative experience and then prevent the next negative experience. Feelings don't give you the capacity to fix what's happening. They give you the capacity to avoid it happening again. <laughs> That's the most important part. Okay, And, and those are the feelings that have the biggest um, pain pleasure component fear isn't innately unpleasant it's just innately back up okay it's innately gives you a sensation of wanting to get away or moving away or um, it compels you but it's not like uh, having a screw screwed into your eyeball anyway this is all 
kind of off the subject, so we'll jump ahead. I, I mean, it's just such nonsense. So he, he sits there and talks about people being anti-scientific. Then he spouts a bunch of religious, completely religious crap about his own personal nonsense that he can't defend with any kind of reasoning, really. It's just absolute made-up junk. So he's sitting here in the in the jury room saying, I have this counter theory, and he's showing us this counter theory that's just absolute mush, that this paramecium has some mechanism that works just like our brain does. It does exactly the same thing, except it doesn't need 100 billion neurons. That the paramecium is somehow way more evolved than we are, because it can do all of that stuff without a brain. I mean, it's an amazing assertion and completely obnoxious to every piece of evidence on the table. ...and are able to, to condense that information. Well, when you're doing that, you're taking a, a, the, the entropy of... Oh, so it's more, you know, this information theory, and entropy nonsense. I mean, everything is cause and effect, and it's a very noisy environment we exist in. And that has a consequence. So this idea that entropy can only work, though, if you have an open system, that is where the the complexity can leak out, that is the noise, the heat. And that's all that's based on, but if it's a closed system, then the heat's coming back, <laughs> okay? There's no entropy. There's just a constant reflects off something and reflects back into the system. So you could argue there's no entropy in the center of the Earth. The heat just really can't get anywhere because there's too much for it to fight through. So eventually anything that's going out goes back in, gets reflected. It eventually hits something like a mirror and it just isn't going to go anywhere. So the surface of the Earth is, would be really cold if there was no sun, but the center of the Earth would be really hot. But the rules of entry be broken, but they're not really broken. They're just understood to be, ah, oh, it's a closed system. There's a bunch of insulation and the insulation prevents the heat from getting out. 10,000 experiences that were all actually unique and you're characterizing them down into like, hey, I've got five variables. How much did I like the person? How sober was I? How uh, considerate? So, so again, uh, this idea of categorizing, and he's not somebody who can't even do it r rationally, but the idea that we would use notions of profiling our sets or categories to um, better understand things that are wet versus things that are dry, things that are cold versus things that are hot makes perfectly good sense. Uh, edible food, unedible food, uh, dangerous things, not dangerous things. These are great categories, great way to make them. And as I've just pointed out, though, he's the one who violates all the rules. He takes a stupid category like life and says life means something when life doesn't have any definition. You, ha you haven't accurately defined what a living thing is. So he's saying that a DNA molecule essentially is life and therefore it has a brain and it is feeling and it is wanting to go to lunch and it is contemplating the universe. Was I, how empathetic was I, how I, or whatever you're characterizing them as, you, you, this type of experience or type of personality or type of, you know, repeatable experience. Again, it's just totally uninteresting. Um, the fact that we are collecting information is the more important fact. The fact is that we take 10,000 years to acquire a bunch of knowledge about how the system works. And part of that knowledge is knowing how bad mistakes are. So I've been reading Faraday's um, biography, and it's full of good stuff in there here and there but clearly these scientists were devoted to this subject of action at a distance and they were clearly convinced the action at a distance wasn't spooky that something's causing the interaction something is conveying the information from one point to another it's not magically getting anywhere and that's the nature of the physics and and at, towards the end of his life Faraday was basically saying there is no ether so I mean all the ether people are out of luck with Faraday um, uh, and this was after Maxwell had died, um, and Faraday started drawing the conclusion that this is a superfluous obstacle to the truth, not a mechanism to find the truth through this mechanism. But anyway, I won't even get into that. Just the idea that they were this was a really primary pursuit was this idea of you, you don't make up wooey answers. You don't have fake answers to the questions. And you'd be really, really, Faraday was extremely concerned about any speculations ever leading to a a hard conversation or making it into a truth um, and uh, so he was, he was very worried when every time he would speculate with somebody he'd make sure this is just speculation this is just some the thought thing you go through and uh, it's a process but don't take any of this seriously um, very careful about 
what would be drawn as a conclusion when you could say you've proven something. Uh, very concerned, at least, about not making mistakes. And here's this asshole is just all about mistakes and recklessness and sloppy. Let's not bother with a trial where we analyze the evidence, where we touch it, pick it up, turn it around, look at it hard. No, let's just put the cardboard pictures over there and we'll just imagine it all. It's close enough. Drawing of a gun is close enough to a gun. Virtual fingerprint, just as good as the real thing. Experience. That is reducing the entropy. Why? Because then you can think about, instead of thinking about 100,000 experiences with people, you think in terms of five or six personality types. Well, again, this is just so obvious that you have to reduce things to the simpler numbers. Um, the simpler concepts to be able to manipulate them in any functional way. You can't juggle something if the, the, what you're juggling is loose, <laughs> okay, falls apart. Um, so yes, you have to turn everything into a solid thing to be able to manipulate the solids in any kind of rational way. I guess that's one way of analogizing it. Um, but it's just the idea of knowing the distinctions between the right answer and the wrong answer. Those are categories. And they're important categories, proof and not proof. There's important categories. And I'm just saying he's the one who's making a mess out of that. And having repeated experiences, meaning that you can then characterize your experiences instead of with 10,000 bits of data, you can do it with five or 10 or 20. And in quantum information, not just quantum information, actually. Well, there's no quantum information. So again, he uses terminology, doesn't mean a damn thing. There's no, whatever, what the fuck could that baby talk possibly mean? There's no special quantum information. It's just, it's just drivel. And, and he's talking like, again, like we all have to accept the existence of this, that we can't have a conversation about how to manipulate concepts and ideas without accepting the existence of something called quantum information. I don't have to accept the existence of any such mush. And in them also, um, uh, they developed this before there was even the concept of a bit of, of that entropy is like information that's over your head, un unaccessible information. Right, so more pretend. There's a pretend universe, and we're the byproduct of the pretend universe. The, you know, the fake universe is making the real universe. I mean, it's just a non-starter for a rational or reasonable person. Everything we see doesn't have anything to do with that woo. Uh, everything looks real cause and effect. Every experiment, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. And here he's pretending there's a spontaneous and there's a random and there's all this stuff. And where is it? It's all in the places that are invisible. None, none of it's in the invisible places. He's the boogeyman all live in the, the magical inverted house, you know, that's in the fifth dimension. They all live in the fifth dimension, so you'll never see them coming in or coming out. <laughs> you know, some kind of horse shit. It's just a, an invisible man, pile of crap. Uh, yes, little kids can imagine it, but adults should be way above it. Right, and yet living creatures pump entropy both in the thermodynamic energy sense, right, and also in this... Eh, they don't pump anything. They steal and use, and that's all anything can do. So, just more lies. <laughs> so anyway. In the case of science, it's a rejection of scientific expertise. So, there he just said it, again. And it, it's not. Um, but clearly, uh, where, are they, where are they experts? I've demonstrated quite obviously that the only thing they're expert at is mathematics. They have no expertise on subjects. They don't even know what experiments have been done. They haven't done the experiments. They haven't seen the experiments done. They have notions of what has happened, but they don't even have an accurate understanding of the basic fundamentals of the experiment. Again, if I ask them to draw me the picture of how the photon travels through the interferometer, they won't do it. They won't show you the picture because they don't know. They never worried about any of that crap. They just accepted that it works. They don't really care how it works. They just say it works. And then they'll say it works so well they can measure half a proton. Well, I ask them, well, how can you line up mirrors so precisely that there's less than a half of a proton of irregularity in the surfaces of the mirrors? Where did you get that science from? I, I mean, these, this is just obvious how the experts are kind of clueless, that they're really not experts in concepts um, or mechanics. They're experts at doing mathematical equations, and that's about it. Now, my theory that, um, you know, a lot of scientists and biologists 
they'll really balk at, well, we don't know consciousness. It's probably just for a mammalian brain. Well, whatever. Uh, I'm not uh, saying so he just made that up. A lot of them will do this, and someone will do that. This is just vague mush. Doesn't mean anything. So what would the 99% of biologists say on the subject of uh, brain function? They're going to say that consciousness happens in your brain. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I really don't think there's any doubt that, well, whatever, 97% of people with a biology degree will say the brain is where your consciousness is created. <laughs> yeah. And he's pretending that, oh, there's a whole bunch of, oh, they're just vague on a subject. They don't understand how it works at all, blah, 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 blah. It's all mystery. Woo, paramecians are thinking. I agree with every scientist. I'm saying the data that the scientists have, you know, none of us could say at what threshold consciousness doesn't exist but by induction when i was a kid being uh, so he old, says definitely. none of us can do this and then yet he'll say right in the next sentence here that well of course we can get a vague line where the fence is there's a fence and we can see where the fence sort of is <laughs> so, so he can contradicts himself constantly you know, um, it was typical shyster lawyer it's hard to find people that were still saying dogs and cows and stuff didn't really feel pain. It just looks like that. They're just like robots. I mean, like I said, most of the scientists wouldn't say that. So again, he's just making an assertion based on no evidence or no anything. No, that's what the common dope that you've been defending, the idiocracy says. That's what idiots say. That's what the meat eaters say to defend their meat eating. Come on, it's no other. It's not more complicated than that. They're just uh, justifying the torment and the torture that exists in the world by pretending it doesn't exist, pretending it's okay. Like you, they're just making excuses for torturing things. It looks like they have pain, you know. You know, pretty much everybody knew that wasn't true, and that that's fading. We know, and so with birds, lizards, oh, insects. When does it stop? I say by induction, it goes all the way through the life forms. Though even I, uh, it goes all the way through the life forms. Except even I will draw a line at paramecium's. For you know, what sense does that make? <laughs> it's silly. It doesn't have a brain, you idiot agree there's a fuzzy boundary like so he agrees there's a fuzzy boundary but he has the boundary so in an irrational place like again two percent of biologists might you know people with a college degree might accept that that's possible two percent maybe and he calls me uh the anti-scientist what about a virus that goes in and is an organelle? What about the organelles in the cell? You know, so whatever. But at least so whatever. So he just whatevered over something. He's saying something so preposterous. And again, nobody's rejected my theory. Okay, I mean, nobody with a scientific degree has shown up to say, uh, "I have evidence. Here's my evidence. Here's my reasoning." So we don't have any of that yet, where they've demonstrated I'm wrong about anything. Okay, that what I'm saying isn't theoretically quite possible and um, plausible. Nothing. Where his crap can be debunked by volumes of evidence, volumes of citation to the fact that we already know what paramecians are doing. It's a knee jerk. It's not a brain. It's a reflex. They're just chemically communicating, chemical communication. It's such a crude system. There isn't even an electrical conduit. Down to the cell, roughly, at least down to probably bacteria, at least down to you know um, eukaryotic cells. That's just so just more not absolute nonsense. Eukaryotic, like it matters whether it has a nucleus or it doesn't have a nucleus. It's full of plasma, and somehow if it has a nucleus, oh well, then it's got a brain. I mean, it's just so bad. I, and then he talks about saving science, and this is the kind of thinking he's doing. This is his demonstration of good science. Is what I think. Now, it is one of these ideas. It's like most people don't believe that. That's crazy. Like, I thought they would be like, well... Not most people. Most people who would call themselves scientists or who have degrees in a science wouldn't believe that. The vast majority would say, no, you've got that one wrong, silly person. Well, I met a homeless person that said that I think, well, perfectly normal. He must be mentally ill. Okay. I mean, he literally said something like that anyway. If I met some Yes, he said something probably perfectly rational. Like, why should I listen to every babbling idiot? I don't have enough time to do that. Someone in the street, maybe it wasn't someone homeless, but um, he was talking about crazy people you meet in the streets. And it's like, okay, you can think that, but the challenge of me telling you is for you to come back with some 
scientific thing. That's yeah, there's a ton of scientific things, and you ignore every one of them. Every single counter argument to your mush I've ever presented, you've never countered with a single coherent argument. You've never debunked a single statement I've ever made, citing evidence, pointing to evidence. I point to the fact that the triple slit doesn't create a pattern that's possible to create with interference. It's impossible to create images with an interference theory. Where have you demonstrated I'm wrong? Where have I, where have you demonstrated, I say it's impossible for somebody to sit there and come up with some rational reason why a photon breaks in two when it goes through a single slit. Why does it break into two? Why doesn't it break into five? Why doesn't it break into 700 if it's going to break? Where, where's the reason? You have no reasoning for your mush. Says, you know, that it contradicts. As opposed to these other guys, like uh, Gary and Bill Gady, and, or Gade or whatever it is, um, so, so again, I'll just point out, he still can't be sure what his name is, and he's, he's going to comment on his theory when he still can't even get his fucking name right. I mean, amazing bullshit. Um, especially when, you know, in recent times, he says his name all the time, Bill Gady. So, I mean, it, just amazing bullshit. Um, but again, I've separated myself from the distance, pointed out the difference between us. They don't want to have the argument. They don't want to argue the evidence. They want to pretend evidence doesn't matter. Bill Gates says things that are just preposterously stupid in terms of making arguments about how some were supposed to make uh, um, uh, draw conclusions based on just mush. You know, it's just an opinion or something. It's not just an opinion. No opinion is just an opinion. It's either one that you can logically explain. How did I get to this opinion? Well, I looked at this and I looked at that and I looked at that and I looked at that and it was pretty conclusive evidence. There's a gun, there's fingerprints, there's real ones. They're not made out of cardboard. They're the real thing. Real gun, real fingerprints. Okay, real video of the guy doing it. Uh, you know. Yeah, that you can convict. Theory. They all, and, and the dissident scientists. So again, they all do something that he says he's not guilty of. It's an amazing statement for which, you know, it's just more just demonstrating what a preposterous shyster this is. He does the very same thing they do, makes a bunch of assertions based on no evidence, makes claims that something's proven when it hasn't been close to be proven, makes a claim that there's evidence when there isn't any evidence. You go look for it, it's not there. So it's in that drawer. No, it isn't. I looked in the drawer. There's no fucking evidence in your fucking drawer. Um, you're full of shit. <laughs> okay, why are you asserting something that you with nothing to back it up? You're just making shit up. And so he's accusing them when he's just as guilty. Everything he believes is mush. They all seem to argue for some feeling of physicality. Yeah, some feeling of physicality. See how he puts it? It has nothing to do with a feeling that the universe, physics should be physical, right? I mean, that sounds stupid. I should even have to argue that physics should be about physical things, things you can draw, things you can explain as cause and effect chains. Even if you're going to make the spontaneous thing, it's okay with me. Even if you're going to put God in the physics, it's okay. Draw me a picture where God did it. So draw me a picture. You can just say, the entanglement fairy makes this go left. But draw me a picture. You don't have anything. You have nothing. You have no mechanism at all. You have virtual photon that you can't even make, you can't even explain. You've made an invisible man and you still can't explain how he does attraction and repulsion. You can't explain how, well, he's inside out one day and he's right side out the other day. I mean, you, you don't even, you know, you can't even just use invisible man. You have to make invisible man to have special properties because he's got to do something you can't even explain how it gets done, this pull thing. You can't even explain how it happens. How does he make a pull? <laughs> how does he do that? What does he pull on? <laughs> I mean, it's just so bad. Oh, so bad. And, and that is, in itself is weird because to me... Yeah, there's nothing weird about this. You are just such a piece of crap as a thinking being. Your brain is such shit that it makes such outrageous uh, uh, crimes against logic. To sit there and accuse other people of making these continuity crimes when you are constantly committing the crime. You're such a duplicitous hypocrite. I mean, it's just so grotesque that you almost have to say this is deliberate. Like somehow he's so into the Borg that he's going to sit there and make these credibility arguments when he knows how incredible his own theory is. And he just doesn't care. He's so desperate to prove it that his fairy godmother exists. Mechanics right now, there's some weird things. When it says there's part... Yeah, there's some weird things. He can't even explain what quantum mechanics is. Either can their quantum physicists come up with a consistent definition of it. 
So it's like having a rabbit in each one of them. One of them's describing a badger, and the other one describes a rhinoceros, and the other one's an elephant. And you're saying, come on, you people don't know what the fuck you're talking about, right? You have this thing, quantum mechanics, and yet it comes out. One guy says it's an elephant, the other guy says it's a rabbit. Come on. What are you talking about? Why are you using the phrase when you can't even define what it means? Particles and the particles in two places at once and all that. That seems kind of weird. But there's a less weird... No, it seems kind of extraordinary. And you ought to have something like even ordinary evidence to prove it. And you don't even have that. You have fucking cardboard. You have drawings on cardboard. And you just keep saying, convict, convict, convict on my cardboard drawings. It's as good as evidence. Trust me. I'm a scientist. I'm defending science. I'm defending reasoning. It's all made out of cardboard. There's no reality to these arguments. They're lies. They're nonsense. The gun isn't a gun. The annihilation isn't annihilation. Again, they'll, see, they'll admit it. The top physicists will say, well, when I say annihilation, I don't really mean anything's annihilated. I mean, it's so bad. ...interpretation, which is that everything's waves, and these part of... So again, this nonsense... It looks like a torpedo, it behaves like a torpedo, and we're just for the fuck of it going to call it a wave instead. We're going to say the wave is, oh, yes, it's the wave is moving in a straight line, and it doesn't spread, and it stays in this little container, and we're going to call it a wave. Even though it's obviously a torpedo, okay, it's not a wave. I can see the difference. It's, fuck have to do just with interactions, right? It's, it's something that the measurement device just takes a measurement. All right, so this whole measurement thing always comes up, too. And it's just, again, the, the irony is, is even the whole Planck thing and everything else is sort of based on the fact that our measurement devices have limitations. And so we just say, well, we can't see it if it doesn't come in a certain form. So if we don't get the photon in a big clump of it, big ray of photon, six elements, we can't see it doesn't exist to us. So that's our limit. So that's our Planck limit. But if I take a photo detector, I mean a, a photo multiplier, well, then I can see shorter photons. <clears throat> but the problem is, is when I say, look for really, really small ones, you know, turn it all the way to highest sensitivity, well, then all of a sudden it sees photons everywhere. <laughs> and the irony is, is that's the confirmation of the very point I'm making, is that the energy is all over the place. It's a ton of it. Okay, and so what it's seeing is the little short rays. That's right. They're not aberrations. They're not the photo detector getting it wrong. They're the photo detector getting it right. And it's just so ironic. But yes, all of this is dependent on us having to use instrumentality to enhance our, our uh, dull senses. So we use telescopes and we use microscopes and we use photo detectors and other instruments and electron microscopes. And those are real things. And then they come up with tunneling microscopes, which really aren't real things. It's synthetic. Okay, it's, the, it's now we let computers see it for us. And the computers are allowed to use their imagination. And they're allowed to fix things and enhance things. They're allowed to cheat based on our theory. And so they can make it look just the way we want it to. Surprise, surprise. But everything's actually away, but the measurement device is located in space, so it gets a measurement, you know. And then there's a correlation between that measurement and other measurements because things are correlated, you know. Uh, right, they're correlated in some kind of imbecilic way, like the simplest pattern in the world is on, off, on, off. And so somehow because waves do, can interfere with each other and can create a thing that looks sort of like on, off, that is one part is real jiggly and one part isn't, and one part's jiggly and one part isn't, okay, because waves can do that in one instance, Every single time you see on off in the world, it's got to be wave interference. Oh, that's the only conclusion. <laughs> no, there's lots of things that create on off. Lots of things at a frequency. Bullets fired from a gun, for example, are not waving to the target. And then there's conservation of energy. So basically, it's not very weird to have waves, and yet, uh, very specific. It's very weird to turn torpedoes into waves. It's very silly to tell me that a car going down the street, because it has a momentum, has a frequency. It doesn't have a frequency. That's just stupid. It's physically not a fact. <laughs> okay. But all of them tend to be a little, except for, you know, Ken Wheeler, I guess, is pro the waves or something. 
Um, his is the least clear theory. Um, no, I think yours is the least clear. Your entangled particles, your mushy, vaporous, you know, I mean, on its face, silly explanation. At least Ken Wheeler's asserting something that you can pick at. Your, all of your excuses are invisible man. Oh, it's the invisible geodesic. Oh, it's the invisible virtual photon. Oh, it's the invisible entanglement power. Yours are all nothing statements that nobody can argue with because they're God statements. They're some silly notion that you can't even draw it. You can't even draw it. It's so fucking silly. Of the ones I mentioned here. Anyway, to me. <coughs> anyway, the point is, what's weird about waves? I mean... Okay, I, well, I've already pointed out. It's weird to call something that's not waving a wave. I'm not a wave... This pair of flyers is not waving. I mean, it's just silly. It's not waving its way through the universe. If I threw this battery into space, it wouldn't wave its way there. It's just silly crap. Water and water waves, and we all pretty much can intuitively understand. It's not, like, totally obvious, but... And again, the water waves have no real evidentiary value. The doesn't Water waves don't create interference in the single slit. Water waves don't create images in the multi-slit. It doesn't fit the evidence. It doesn't, it's not in any way a way of describing events taking place in one place going to another place. A ray does describe it. A ray of light comes from the sun. A thing called a photon travels here. Not some wave spreading all over the universe. The photon's not going to Saturn and Venus and all those places. Individual photons are, okay? <laughs> But the photon isn't. There's rays of light. Ray is a better theory. That's the argument. <clears throat> and your claim is, I never heard of a ray. You've never made any rational explanation of how rays don't explain it. Rays are what comes off of a charge. That's what creates the inverse square law. Rays perfectly create the inverse square law. They're a perfect explanation, okay? Not not in any way flawed as an explanation. They're perfect. They do it perfectly. I mean, completely, uh, entirely. I don't have any water present. Um, <laughs> but um, if you want to make the inverse square law, then you just understand something coming from a small location going out to a big location. And this is the inverse square law. It's just the fact that the, the rays will... Um, separate in two dimensions. They'll move away from the, each other this way, and they'll move away from each other this way. And that creates this inverse square law. Half the distance, four times difference. So four, not twice. So I increase this 2x, and I decrease that by 4x. Okay, it's 4x weaker, because that's to spread over four times the surface of the two dimensions. So it perfectly explains the phenomenon. And it perfectly explains that it goes from this place to this place. And it creates shadows. Waves don't do that. If this was one wave, if each photon was going here, 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 every single one was going everywhere at once, you can't explain how it landed here in any rational way. <laughs> It's a pathetic explanation. It's so stupid. The information you can understand sound and waves and stuff. What makes it weird? Light and everything turns no, out to be a kind of wave. No, it's stupid. It's not weird. It's stupid. It doesn't explain the phenomenon. There's no point in forcing torpedoes to be waves. They seem particular because of our interaction with them. Yeah, there's some weird things about that science, but it's no weirder than magic ropes that connect every single thing. <clears throat> yeah, it is weirder, okay? It's weirder for you to say that a photon turns into some magical thing that you can't prove it turns into, and that those magical things, the two of them it turned into, somehow interfere with each other in some magical way, and then decide to become one photon at the other end. So your theory is a torpedo is heading for the opening, the torpedo breaks into two magical not torpedoes, the not torpedoes do mathematical calculus and figure out where they're supposed to go, and then go there. I mean, it's silly as a theory. It's a lot sillier than a rope theory. 
All right, well, there's really no point. The rest of this is pretty much garbage, and I don't want to make this video too long. But anyway, the accusation is clear. So he's making an accusation that I'm anti-science when all I'm doing is saying, cite evidence, show me the experiments, show me the reasoning, show me the logic, show me why do you believe what you believe, show me the logical connections that tell you it has to be this silly way when I've shown you in every way, I've given you 2 plus 2 plus 2 physics, I've shown you how two forces and two kinds of matter can create all the interactions you need to create all of the phenomena of charge and magnetism and polarization. I've shown you how it can all work, and yet you're saying this is anti-science, this explanation. Your explanation isn't anti-science. Mine's anti-science. How did you make the diff why, how did you decide the difference? Because you believe it. That's it. You're just saying I'm right. You're wrong. You're not explaining how I'm wrong. And you're certainly not explaining how you're right. You're not explaining how your crappy evidence is hard evidence. You haven't explained how the Eddington experiment is good. You haven't explained why they haven't redone it. With all our technology in space right now, anytime they want to, they could do the experiment any day. Ten minutes. It takes 15 minutes to do the experiment. Because it's yeah, out in space. You know, we have to wait for an eclipse here on Earth. No, out in space, anytime you want to do it, 15 minutes, you're done. Um, why haven't they done it? Critical experiment. <laughs> Why haven't you proven anything that you assert it to be a fact? How are Einstein rings visible? Einstein said they wouldn't be because they'd be so small. How are they visible? How, do, how does the lens that's the exact wrong shape focus light exactly like a uh, traditional magnifying lens? So how does a lens that's shaped exactly the opposite of the magnifying lens create exactly the same results? How is that possible? Have you answered any of these questions? No. Will you answer them? No. You're just a, a fraud, a phony, and a fake. You're a propagandist, just arguing your fucking religion, and that's it. You're just saying, my God is God. All the other religions are silly. And that's all you're doing. I'll agree that all the other religions are silly. There is only one truth. Somebody's got to be right, and everybody else has to be wrong. <laughs> that's just a fact. Um, and the truth is, I think I'm defending the fact that you're the ones that are wrong, obviously. And I'm obviously correct because I have the simpler theory and it answers more questions. I win the test. The test is answer the most questions in the most detail, be more consistent with the evidence, and be simple. I've won the test. You fail the test. Fact. <laughs> uh, a fact for which there is no rational counter-argument except my hair is too long or um, I yell too much. <laughs> There's no, no rational argument.